This video demonstrates the steps used in calculating loads with the flux model. We again uh, open flux version 3.37. Since I've already loaded the data in, we'll go to Session, and we'll resume a save session. The save session is Poplar River 2007 through 2012. All the data that uh, was summarized in the previous application of Flux is shown here. Okay, there's a number of different tabs at the top editing data, that is if you want to select data to include or exclude, uh, calculating loads and a couple of other things, TMDL load duration approach, looking at series of data, flow separation, base flow separation if you want to look at just storm flow or just base flow. Um, compare, if you want to compare sample flow with total flow distribution you can do that. And of course loads, which is what we're interested to hear. So what we'll do is we'll take, uh, click on this tab, and we're going to go through the steps in calculating loads. When you click that, the uh, <coughs> you get this window that shows the calculated loads. In this example, or current step that we're in, we have all the data uh, pooled together. We haven't separated them out by season or by flow magnitude. So there are no strata. There's just basically a single uh, set of flow data. Later we'll show how to break the data up uh, by flow magnitude to create several strata. Load estimates are given in the bottom of this uh, of this window. The six methods are shown here plus uh, the time series method. Uh, we are using the first six method in our application. The flux in kilograms per year, the mean flux is given here. The first number for method, or the average load or method one, is 2,992,964 kilograms per year. That's 2,992 metric tons per year. If I want to convert that to tons per year English units, I would multiply the number by 2.2 .2 and then divide by 2,000. The uh, flux variance is given here, and the square root of that would be the standard deviation of the flux estimate. And if you divide that standard deviation by the mean flux, it will give you the coefficient of variation. You see here there's quite a range of values for the mean flux among the six methods. And there's also quite a range of values of the coefficient of variation. If you read the flux user's manual, you'll find that it's uh, recommended that what you try to do is to modify the data in a way such that you end up with nearly uniform flux estimates or at least uniform coefficient of variation values. We will be doing that by substratifying the data, that is, creating several strata of the data, and we'll find that these estimates will uh, start to approach each other. So let's go in and we'll edit the data, <clears throat> go back to the data tab, and there's the stratify tab, and we're going to stratify based on discharge. We could stratify based on date, on season, uh, on hydrograph, but here we're just going to use uh, the discharge. And I'll just zoom over here to, uh, or select two strata. And there's defaults here. What is uh, The first stratum is, uh, <clears throat> the upper limit of the first stratum is the mean flow, mean annual flow, and then the uh, the maximum flow is given here as 1,493 million cubic meters per year. Number of samples in each of the strata is given here. Uh, there's 111 samples in all, so there's 51 in the first strata and 60 in the second. Flux does not like you to have less than two 
uh, sample values in a given strata. So you have to be careful when we create the strata so you don't end up with too few samples in a given strata. Once we've uh, okayed this, and we could change these numbers, uh, they are, do have to be in ascending order uh, from one strata to the next, but uh, we could change them if we had some ideas to how I might like to modify uh, or how I want them split up. But the model does have these defaults. Uh, once we've okayed this selection, we uh, click on the Done Save button. Yes, we want to keep those changes and we'll replace the stratum titles with automatic titles. So now we're ready to calculate the flux again. Go up to Loads. <coughs> and here we see that we have two strata and the estimates are given below as before and we see that there's been a drastic change in the estimates from 2,990,000 now we're down to 1,594,000 for the method 2. You can see that coefficient of variation values are still uh, not very uniform. Uh, most of the methods are, are pretty close to each other but the uh, average load value is still quite a bit higher Okay. So, uh, we're not quite there yet. One of the things we can do here is we can visualize these estimates in the plot, from the plot menu. We can go down here to load and then down to box chart by method. And this uh, is a representation of those estimates we just saw. Method 1, method 2, method 3, method 4, so forth, up to method 6, and then method 8. The line in the middle is the mean, and you've got upper and lower limits, which are basically uh, plus or minus uh, the standard deviation of the estimate. So this is a nice visual way to see how close these uh, estimates are and how they overlap e with each other to some degree. Now the green line here, or the green box, just means that uh, I could be focusing on method 6, and so if I were to do some plots of the residuals or some other type of uh, variable that I might be interested in, let's say constant, if I want to look at concentration versus flow, it would do, method, do it for method 6 right now. I could choose a different method and it would show up as this green box, so I could have chosen method 1 to do that. But when I do the load estimates, all the estimates, the estimates are made for all of the methods, just as you see here. We'll go back up here and we'll edit again, or we're going to stratify further. And I'm going to choose the maximum uh, number of stratifications. We'll go up to four. And uh, here we see the these uh, estimates again the maximum value is 1493 a different subdivision we have just three values in the sample count for the fourth stratum which is still enough but it's just barely enough so you know when you're doing if you were to modify any of these you might want to make sure one of the criteria you'd use to, would be to make sure that uh, you have enough sample values in the uh, strata that you're choosing Again, we'll save the changes, we'll save the titles, and we're ready now to calculate the uh, flux again. Oh, and by the way, at the lower left-hand corner, we can see how the strata are, bro are broken up. We have uh, uh, the first strata, the maximum value is one-half the mean value. The second strata, the maximum value is two times the mean value. The third stratum has a maximum of eight times the mean value. Uh, and the fourth stratum is all values greater than eight times the mean value. Here we'll calculate the loads again. You can see all the strata, how many values or how many samples were within each strata and so forth. And we can see now the coefficient of variations are very, have approached each other very well. The loads do appear to be very close to each other. I think uh, it appears to be that the maximum difference is about 17,000 uh, kilograms per year. So the um, variation is, uh, is not too bad. Actually, it's uh, you know, maybe 100,000. 
haven't read that correctly. But anyway, uh, you can see that the coefficients of uh, variation are uh, not varying that much. And so we might actually have a pretty good estimate at this point. I could go back in and do uh, some modification of the stratification, let's say manually change the upper limits of each of the stratification ranges and just to play around with it to see if I could actually approve, improve upon this. If the maximum number of strata is four, uh, so if we just use the defaults, this is what the result would be. We could, as I say, modify it so that we might get a bad, better result than this. We won't do that at this point. Okay, so then we can say OK. We could take down those values, uh, print out that uh, page if we want, so we keep it on record. I could save this session at this point, and that would save it uh, with this last uh, set of um, adjustments, that is, with the flow strata. So it would save it at that point if I wish to do that. <coughs> Now let's say, what if I wanted to go on and uh, try a different data set? I could read new sample data only. I've already read the sample flow and uh, or sample and flow data. Here we're going to read just the new sample data alone. And here I'm going to go back and we're going to uh, go back to the same data file that we had before. And previously we had looked at TSS and flow 2007 to 2012. Well, let's say now I want to look at TSS and flow 2002 to 2006. I'll select that. And the sample flow field for that data set is flow. And the sample constituent field for that is TSS. All right, so in that data set we have 74 sample observations. It doesn't like the fact that I uh, had four um, strata. So we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to go back. The reason why is because there's too few samples in this case to work with it. We again have to modify the concentration units uh, conversion. All right, so I'm going to have some trouble here with this. Um, see if I can get out of this problem. Okay, so it did uh, put me back in the right place. You never know what's going to happen sometimes with these computer programs. Uh, <clears throat> we now are back to where we have one strata, but now you can see that the sample data I'm working with is the sample data from 2002 to 2006. If I go in here and I calculate the loads, as I did before, And we calculate the loads as we did before, and uh, you see here uh, the loads are uh, what two million or six million eight hundred eighty-four thousand. Coefficient of variations. There's quite a range of values, and there's a big difference in these mean flux values. Uh, we saw the same kind of thing with the first data set, but here it appear it's going to appear that the flux uh, load values are going to be even higher than what we saw before. So again, we will uh, do a stratification. <coughs> I'll try uh, three strata. And you'll note there's plenty of sample values in each strata in this case. Calculate the loads again. And uh, coefficient of variation become much better. 0 0.22, 0 0.21, 0 0.20 and the range of uh, load constant, uh, the load values or the flux values are very much closer to each other um, 2 million 700 thousand, 2 million 350 thousand and so forth. So uh, we might go with four strata again making sure that we have enough samples in each strata but um, this may be good enough at this point.
Okay, so then we would go back and we could do that for the um, the last uh, sample set, which was the uh, sample data from 1984 through uh, 2001. And with that, uh, that completes this video.